Welcome back to PJ Chen Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you this XOXO bracelet and how you construct it with the stone setting in the middle. Are you ready? Let's get started. To make this XOXO ring, uh, there are actually only one portion we need to figure out, which is this portion I'm marking into the red. So things we need to calculate it is the depth for the stone to sitting in there and the distance between this one and this one and how we're going to punch a hole for this to be flexible as a bracelet. That's starting from the scratch. First of all, let's get a stone back. Um, you can download the stone at the description below. I have a link for you to sign up the newsletter and then you will get a stone, round stone to download. Okay, once you set up the stone size, we are gonna coming over here to do a cross. The easiest way to do is I'm going to do something like this, the bigger, longer than what I need, and using the gumball to rotate it 90 degree by holding the shift, at the same time hit the all key so you will get the copy of it. All right, and that's having it rotated for 45 degrees or something like that. And I would like to have them to move it back to here. So ideally you want this to pass the cross, the point of this to pass, you know, the center of a stone. So that way it's definitely going to be enough. We can do a test first and we can adjust it if it is too long or too small. Ideally you want them to be close. Apparently at this one it's a little bit too long, but that's okay. I wanted to show you what I have in mind. Um, let's go ahead to have this one and we're going to using the arc tool and this one is starting and direction of the arc snapping into the end point and end point here coming to my front view and get something like this. All right. Now, apparently this is a little bit too tall. As you can see, even we have a stone with the stone setting here there, this might be too tall. So I might want to just lower down those just a little bit over the stone and that will be fine or even need to be a little bit low, uh, lower. Okay, so if we have this one, what we can do is using the pipe tool and we can simply pipe it for whatever diameter that you want. At this point, the radius, I would like to set it up for 0.5 and I will get something like that. With this one, with the new pipe that I have, I'm going to making a copy by rotating the gumbo and hit the all key. All right, so then we have something like this. Again, this might be a little bit too long, but I wanted to place here and to show you how we're going to adjust it. All right, so if we have this stone, we need to make a C for the stone. So first of all, that's using this tube command and snapping into the zero. And I wanted to them to go about here and coming out, it's just a little bit smaller than the stone size because you do not want to see the stone showing up right and then i'm going to move this one just a little bit lower all right so now in my front view you can see that my stone is sitting in there and i do need to have two prongs so i'm gonna go from here holding my shift coming up just a little bit like this and with this one let's go ahead to pipe it as well i wanted to pipe to be 0.4 millimeter in the radius so i will get something like this all right so this is where my first prong is and again we do not want it to have the prong cutting into the stone so much we want to move it out a little bit just about 20 25 percent of the prong thickness will be fine once we have that and we like the thickness of the prong and let's go ahead to mirror to the other side so we have another one right there now uh, let's take a look on this on the bottom we do not have need to have them like so stick it out so i'm going to just simply draw a square snapping into here and simply just have my those two tube not two those two pipe uh, for my prong and to be bowling difference from the box that I draw, all right? So it's flush on the bottom, all right? Just in case I accidentally need to touch them, I wanna group them and also I wanna lock them. Okay, so once we have this right there, we wanted to take a look on our design right here. Now our design right here, apparently it's a little bit too long. So ideally, I would like to have this one coming over to here right and the ending is roughly about right there okay so now this is apparently a little bit too long so we want to shorten them 
by coming into here and deciding where we want the end to be. So if my end is going to be something over here, right in the middle of the right side, I'm going to draw a line coming up here and using this one to trim the extra line there. So this curve I'm going to trim in, this curve I'm also going to trim in. Now with this one, let's go ahead to mirror that curve because we want to trim exactly the same thing. Make sure your intersect on the old snap is on. With this, I'm going to use that line to trim off this. Okay. So now we have something like this. We're going to do exactly the same thing and see if that fit for our needs. Let's go ahead to use the art tool. You're going to do start and direction. So start and and direction holding the shift, right? With this one, let's go ahead to pipe it. And we want to pipe the same for 0.5 millimeter and the same with the other side. Okay. Now we have this. Let's go ahead to rotate it. 90 degree with the shift holding and hit the all key. So then you got a copy there. All right. Now that's moving this one down and see how that work. Right. Okay. All right. So that look good. Uh, as long as they are not touching and everything, it should be fine there. All right. Once we have this, we need to starting knowing where we want to punch a hole there. So let's go ahead to create a cylinder and the cylinder is about this size. Um, I can say wanted to have the 0.35 here and I want cylinder to go all the way to touch the other side. All right. And this cylinder should be right in the middle. So that's using the align with the center and hit zero and then we'll get something like this. All right. We also want to test like we want to uh, unlock this one and we also want to test how is it looking on the other side. So let's go ahead to mirror this guy to the other side and see if that look okay. All right. So now we have this cylinder. It's going to solder with this one. It's going to solder with this one. On the other side, we need to have a hole right there. And that is also um, have a hole punching and it's bigger than the cylinder right there. So simply what I wanted to do is mirror to the other side. And I want to make this one a little bit bigger, bigger than my original has. So I'm just going to make a copy to show you. You don't need to have like super big, but you wanted to have a hole there. It's bigger. So ideally what we wanted to do is to boolean difference this guy out of this bigger one. So there's a hole there and that's where the ping is going through, right? And the other one is this guy. This it's going to be together with this faces. So I'm going to having this one selected and kind of group them together. All right. So in order for let you see easier, I'm going to turn this into the red color. So you can see the red one is already soldered in here and I need to punch in a hole. And you, one thing you want to watch out is here, the hole, you can get it a little bit bigger if you want to, but actually you need to make sure you are not cutting through the stone. So you need to have enough depth there. All right. So now we have this. Let's pick up this one and this one and let's see if we can make them a bunch of them. All right. So let's go ahead to use the um, array tool and we have a linear array and let's say I wanted to have 10 of them and I'm going to coming over here, finding where the center is on this circle. I want to snap into the quad right here and we can move into this part holding my shift and I want to make sure the intersection is on and so we can have it snapping correctly. Now you can see that it's coming into really nicely organized into the shape that we want. And for the box claps here, I have a course for class design and I have more than 11 different type of a class for you to use. Uh, in that course, you can download and use for your rendering or printing or any design for your jewelry. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.